I'm fighting for a basic human right. What's difficult and different is that we cannot come out. It's not a small minority, it's actually a very large population if you look in the larger scheme of things. It would be very stupid for uh, any country, uh, political party to ignore. I think it was time that our part of this community need to step up, speak up. Hello and welcome to this edition of India in 2.0. I'm Nen Tara Rai. Today I have a very special guest. My guest today is Keshav Suri of Bharat Hotels. And we're not featuring him only because of the, his business acumen, but also because he's decided to take on a big fight, moving the Supreme Court to fight uh, criminalization of homosexuality. Hi, Keshav. Thank Hi. you so much for joining us here on ET Now. Thank you for having me. Incidentally, we're coming to you from one of uh, Keshav's nightclubs, Kitty Sue, which is at the Lalit uh, New Delhi. Keshav, it's a very bold step that you're doing. You know, you're fighting against uh, the, you know, criminalization of homosexuality. You've come out as an industrialist uh, and you're saying this is wrong. You're fighting for your entire community. <laughs> it's brave, right? It's bold. Uh, what made you decide to do this? Um, thank you so much for that beautiful compliment. I am uh, no, I'm I'm fighting for myself. To be really honest, uh, yes, I am part of a very large community of the LGBTQ, but I'm fighting for something that should be in any case not in, in existence, not in this day and age. Um, I'm fighting for a basic human right. At the same time, I'm also fighting for something that I um, that I that I think that it would be very stupid for uh, any country or uh, political party to ignore. Mm. Um, if you just go by statistics, uh, if you go by statistics in uh, how we are the second largest population on the planet, therefore. In every uh, aspect, we probably have the largest off. So if, let's say, heart disease, you will say that the maximum number of cases of heart disease are in India. Diabetics, the maximum number of diabetic cases are in India. And therefore, it will be the same for the LGBTQI community. Uh, we would that it's not a small, just small minority. It's actually a very large population. If you look in the larger scheme of things, what's difficult and different for them is that we cannot come out and uh, because of a archaic rule that existed uh, of section 377 which of course came with the British and uh, not blaming anybody we've had 70 more years to have gotten rid of it but now I think we almost did when the Delhi High Court yep. uh, ruled against it but then the Supreme Court uh, overturned that yeah <laughs> yeah but why did you decide to file a petition? Because, you know, it's already under review. Yeah. Uh, the current Chief Justice did say that it's going to be reviewed. Yeah. So why did Keshav Suri uh, decide to take this step? You, of course, have the resources. Yes. The former Attorney General Mukul Rothki is your lawyer. Yes. So that was it, because I have the resources. Um, that was, that's exactly, you hit the nail on the head. I think it was time that uh, people that do have the resources that are a part of this community need to step up, speak up. Um, they need to play that part in this evolution that is happening. And as I would like to call it, a revolution that is going to happen in this country. Um, I am in a fortunate position uh, that I can speak up. I am in a fortunate position that I do have the resources. I'm in, the for in a fortunate position that I'm very lucky that I have a support system like my family, like my friends. To but be tell me, when not. did you start thinking that I'm going to move the Supreme Court, that I'm going to fight a legal battle? A year ago. So your I'll petition be has been in the works for a year? It's been in conversation for a year, but it's only in the last two or three months that I actually drafted something. But when my first conversation that I had with myself, because I have a lot of inner monologue, was that um, I brought in a drag queen from United States who won season seven thanks to this TV show called RuPaul's Drag Race. 
Uh, I'm a huge fan. And uh, when I brought her in, I did not anticipate the power of this TV show. Um, I had 1900 people turn up for her gig and uh, something clicked in me. Something, um, and it, it's always, it's all about timing and I always feel that there are signs in life yeah. and you just got to pick up on those signs. She happened, within a week I was in a conversation in front of the Prime Minister of India uh, called, uh, yes, yeah. uh, it was something that was organized by Niti Ayog, Amitabh Kant. Uh, it was the uh, New India in 2022. Yeah. And they had these young CEOs and different people from all walks of life. And I was a part of uh, a subgroup. And in that subgroup, I they, we were told that, you know, you guys should uh, go beyond your industry. So, of course, my industry is tourism. My business is, is hotels. Uh, and food and beverage, but uh, uh, I chose uh, gender equality. In gender equality, I did a lot of research on where we are uh, in terms of actual gender <laughs> equality. In that, I brought up the LGBTQIA plus community and that agenda. Uh, and when finally um, we presented and my team had presented, I, uh, they had opened up for questioning. And so I got up uh, and just said that what can the public and, and it's on YouTube by the way but I said what is can the public and private sector do to mainstream a marginalized community like the LGBTQIA plus community actually you know what uh, we've got that link from YouTube uh, let's show it to our viewers you talked about the deeply marginalized communities what do you think the private sector needs to do to include the LGBTQ community the lesbians gay uh, transgender and bisexual community, which is a very underrepresented and marginalized community in India? It's not an easy question, I guess, uh, for a lot of people to answer. That's when I took upon myself that I'm going to answer my own question. I'm going to do something. I'm not going to be one of those people who's going to sit on the sidelines and mm. complain about what things are not being done. That minute, I basically took on changed all my forms in my company from uh, where it says uh, sex of the person, male, female, other. As a company, we've been also very much ahead of its time. When my father uh, passed away and my mom took over, the first thing we did was uh, call it uh, chairperson and managing director, not chairman. Then after that, I was like, I realized that there is a huge drag culture, which is completely different from transgender. Drag culture is basically gay men nowadays, gay men that dress up as women to perform. Yeah. They're singers, they're artists, they're, uh, uh, they're, they are, they're various other sort of mediums that they use, but they use this medium of doing drag. And uh, uh, transgender is exceeding, is somebody, is something completely different. They are actually born the wrong sex and they transition to, uh, to change their sex. Both of which communities, even though there has been a lot that has been done for the transgender community, um, as a society, we have not changed. We still think that they are beggars or prostitutes. Uh, I'm now working with insurance firms, by okay. the way, to especially in my own company, to insure same-sex couples, okay. to insure kids born out of surrogacy, even for same-sex couples. But isn't surrogacy an adoption. Uh, banned? Um, I think it's going to take two years for that, <laughs> but there is a conversation, yes. I mean, you say equal rights, that means right to marry, right, right. to inherit. Yes. Equal yes. financial Yes, insurance. Rights. What about if somebody has a partner and needs to go to the hospital and uh, in the hospital you're only allowed to get your family, correct? Uh, how would you explain in a, in a gay couple or in a lesbian couple? So I think, I think there's a long way for us to go. And this is the case actually even in other countries. So if you look at United Kingdom, the United States, uh, the United Kingdom is the one that came up with Section 377. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, so if you look at that, uh, you know, that was the first step. Then after that, it was uh, first making, getting rid of what is criminalizing the homosexual act. Mm. Then after that, it is about uh, giving partial rights, then full rights. Now only, in fact, in the United Kingdom, they've given the right to proper marriage yeah. uh, earlier it was a civil union hmm. that was allowed so um, I'm hoping that uh, we do it sooner yeah 
and are you going to do this fight alone or do you think you could maybe tie up with the original petitioners like the NAS Foundation? Yes, so I am ready to tie up with anybody and everybody who is ready to tie up with me. Mm. Uh, and in fact, I have been in touch with the, uh, the original five petitioners. It is with their consent and their uh, uh, they're, they're okay to for me to actually file this petition. So I worked with Saurabh Kirpal, who was a part of the original petition, Menika, uh, Arundhati, and you know, uh, Ritu Dalmia is also a good friend. So everyone is sort of uh, in connect with each other and with me hmm. for me to be able to file this petition. And I'm hoping that there are mo lots more. I would like more people to uh, get onto the filing this petition in particular and any other petition related to the yeah. LGBTQI plus community. Let's not forget that, you know, there is a, it's again a huge community. And if you just look at the pink rupee aspect of this community, then that the benefits for any government is huge. Why? Because you can, uh, let's look at it in a very simplistic form. I'm just giving you a very simplistic answer. I could be wrong. But a lot of the real estate hip and happening places in New York or London were essentially when the, in brackets, LGBTQI community moved in. Soho, uh, Meat you've got Chelsea, district, yeah. Meatpacking District. Mm. And so real estate has actually gone up. There are so many businesses that have opened up that specifically cater to LGBTQI community. For example, tourism, for example, gay cruises. For example, um, coffee shops, bakeries, uh, and uh, there are also, of course, uh, the GDP growth of certain countries have happened because of LGBTQ to, uh, tourism. Brazil. In fact, uh, Keshav Suri's uh, petition before the Supreme Court actually talks about the pink economy. It talks about how globally there is a large pink economy that India is missing out on. We're going to have that conversation about the pink economy that uh, Keshav Surya cited in his petition of the Supreme Court after the short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching India Inc. 2.0. I'm Nantara Rai. Today, my guest is Keshav Suri of Bharat Hotels, which runs the brand of hotels, the Lalith. The reason we got Keshav on the show today is not just because of his business acumen, but like how we were discussing before the commercial break, his fight at the Supreme Court against Section 377 and homosexuality and the entire LGBTQ community. Keshav, you know, we started talking about how your petition uh, discusses the pink economy, yeah. how uh, multilateral agencies now actually recognize the fact that there is in existence a pink economy, uh, how people from this community contribute towards the GDP, which India is missing out on. Yep. Tell me a bit more about that. So um, the small example that I gave you already about uh, when I brought Violet Chachki in and I had 1900 people for somebody that is on a TV show in the United States just based on drag queens, mainly gay men dressing up as women. Um, that should just answer us. That the was just Delhi. Then I realized that there was a. How much do you charge for entry? I don't want to tell you that. <laughs> Go on kirisu.com. <laughs> kirisu.com. Pricing varies. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and then I realized that there is a huge drag culture in Bangalore. There's a huge drag culture in Mumbai. There is a huge uh, uh, culture for uh, the pink dollar or the pink rupee in Calcutta and Chandigarh. You will not believe it, but I'm doing LGBTQ nights in Chandigarh. Doing research on this, there, are spe there is a huge scope for the pink rupee. Uh, Israel, by the way, uh, you know, th has been promoting LGBTQ tourism uh, for years. And it's very smart the way they do it. And the only country in the Middle East to accept and mm. want LGBTQ tourism. So have you pegged the figure that we're missing out on? Uh, yes, in my uh, writ petition I have and uh, I mean listen, there's a lot more that probably, I mean, these are just facts that I've taken from let's say World Bank. Central I believe your petition is 0.8 to 1.2% yes. of GDP. <laughs> yes, because uh, it, that might actually, you know what, that is, it's probably more than that, I'll be honest with you. A lot of the LGBTQ people, they spend on themselves. They uh, they don't really want to have children. Some do, some don't. 
that's totally up to them. So higher disposable income. Exactly. That was my point. That there it's higher disposable income and therefore more opportunities for them to travel, more opportunities for them to buy housing, more opportunities for them to run their own businesses. You said uh, a big thank you to your family and support system. So uh, do you want to get candid? When did you know that maybe mm -hmm. you are gay and when were you ready to come out? Okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> I think I always knew and I think uh, deep down in their heart also they knew. Um, you know, when I, w I was in uh, St. Columbus in Delhi, uh, it's an all-boys Catholic school. Even though it was a day school, not a boarding school, we were assigned roles uh, that were female. Yeah. And uh, I played Mother Mary and God and whatnot, whatnot. And then as we grew up, I started uh, choosing those uh, roles. Uh, because first it was you were forced into it and then second it was, you know, you elected. And so I was wearing, you know, my mom's uh, uh, sari and uh, she was getting me dresses and I was, my, my friend was making us shoes and all the way up until grade 12 I was doing that and I found that... Oh, so till you were 16, 17 you were doing this? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Till grade 12. Grade 12 I was, must have been 17. 17, yeah. And I was um, get uh, leaving for Warwick. That's where I started in the UK. And I was so comfortable doing that. And uh, I think so, you know, it was it was uh, always pretty much sort of known-esque, I guess. But when I did do my coming out, finally, it was there was a little bit of, oh, my God, uh, you know, are you sure? And I was like, come on. Uh, but then once the initial apprehension got uh, uh, OK, because at the end of the day, I'm, you know, as cliche. So how old were you then? Sound uh, 21. OK. I was 21 when I officially uh, came out, came out. But Please I don't mind my asking this question, but was your father that yes, came alive? Yes, he was. Yeah, he and how was, did he yeah. take it? He had a terrible sense of humor, <laughs> uh, very wicked sense of humor, just like mine. And he also, I think, knew yeah. pretty much. I think uh, it wasn't like it was a deep shock for him. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and he kind of joked it off, hmm. brushed it off. Uh, That's his way of supporting you, I guess. Yeah. He you know. is a wicked sense of humor, so it was it was his way. And I gotta say, I'm very lucky. I was very lucky with both my parents. Uh, yes, uh, he did pass away uh, a year after I sort of uh, came out, uh, and I wish uh, he was still around to see what I'm doing now because I know that he would be very proud of me. Um, one of the other things of why I want to do this, and I'll be really honest because I like you. Is that, you know, I've had uh, supernovas as parents. I've had superstars as parents, both. And uh, I've always been like, I need to make my own identity in this family <laughs> because growing up in their shadow yeah. is going to be tough. <laughs> it is tough. It is tough, you know, growing yeah. up in their shadow. And so I was like, I got to I, I gotta, I gotta make my own mark. Uh, <laughs> I yeah. got to do something that will be like, they'll be like, okay, you know what? We're proud to that, that that's our boy. See, and you want, don't want it to be just in business. You want to do this by me. Is this Everything. your way of giving back to society? Yeah, it is. I, again, I'm a very entitled person. I'm, I'm the wrong person to sit over there and say that I'm grassroots or I am, you know, down the line uh, really helping people. But if I can do something, anything that is going to make an iota of a change. Now, I've got 3,500 employees across the Lalit in my entire uh, organization. If I can change their minds, if I can work with them. And that is why I immediately also went into this pure love campaign uh, that I started after Violet Chachki came uh, in August. And in the first thing I did was actually hire people from the transgender community. And it's so funny, stories came out that, uh, not just stories came out, two of my members who were already working with me, and f this is even before Violet Chachki came in, just felt so comfortable with Kirisu and me and the Lalit that they transitioned mm. and spoke about it after they started transitioning and then post that I have worked with a lot of uh, chefs and you know we through privacy law I can't really ask if you're gay or lesbian but because of all that I'm doing the amount of coming out stories the amount of uh, conversations that my team members are having now the amount of people that are free to 
come here and to let themselves loose. So uh, does that also mean that maybe business hotel expansion um, is taking a back seat for you right now because the entire focus right now is on section 377? Our focus is also our business because I'm a capitalist. I'm not a, I'm not a socialist. I'm not going to sit over there and suddenly be like, oh, I'm, you know, uh, <laughs> sitting over there and curing cancer. No, I'm not. I'm still making money and I still want to make money. And I got to yeah. make money for my mom. Why else do you think Kirisu was a hit? It had to be a hit because yeah. I would have been fired a long time ago. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, I, I just seeing her energy levels and seeing my, my father's energy levels, even the day he passed, uh, he was working in London, he was networking in London, he was uh, on, uh, that time it was, uh, I think, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh who was uh, yeah. Prime Minister and he was basically in London for something, of some event and uh, he came to see me. So, you know, uh, yeah, I can juggle, I, 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 maybe not as good as them though. Keshav, uh, who did you go to, to do all of this? You could have literally chosen any lawyer in the country. Yeah. But I believe you actually went to a childhood friend. So I went to my best friend from school and university, Neha Nagpal. Uh, she is a formidable force in the legal fraternity and in my life. And she's the one who uh, went to Mukul Rodgi, briefed yep. him. She's been doing this. She took this on not just my writ petition. She had actually taken this on a while ago. She was ready to take on this fight 10 years ago when I officially came out. Hmm. She's been involved talking to not only Mr. Rodgi, but also Mr. Salve and as well as Saurabh Kirpal. She's very close with Saurabh. And uh, uh, she has been on it for a while. She's been keeping a Hawkeye view on it for a really long time. And you know, the thing about Neha is that once she makes up her mind on something, she's not going to stop till that job's not done. And did you ever face uh, discrimination, even though you worked in your own parents' company, did yeah. you face discrimination, especially maybe when you have to engage with third parties, let's say, is for some fundraising or, or vendors, etc. Did you have sure. to go through that or do you think you got it easy on that front? I got it easier. I, I, I'm not going to sit over there and give my long list of complaints of, uh, you know, how bad I had it because I honestly had it rough for maybe a year when I was just transitioning in coming In college, did you own. have a tough time? Uh, n you know, bullying exists everywhere. It exists everywhere, yeah. So, you know, I mean, that even happened in school. But I was very thick-skinned and I'm very catty and witty and uh, uh, also very talkative. So, you know, I kind of shrugged it off a lot. But not everyone is me. And not everyone also has the backing of a family like mine. But as far as my team is concerned, they were superstars. The minute I started speaking about this, the minute I started coming out, they... But like we're following you, following you to till the end of the world, and I was very lucky on that. Um, as far as companies not backing, well, I'm in a position now where I'm actually influencing insurers and insurance companies uh, to take up this cause. I must say and give uh, props and a shout out to uh, RBS, Royal Bank of Scotland, in Mumbai, out of their own internal accruals, is insuring their same sex uh, couples and okay. uh, this and the other. So that's sort of inspired me. So I might be an inspiration for a few others, but I'm also still getting a lot, a lot of inspiration from what others are doing uh, in this country and in others. Godrej, for example. Uh, again, somehow, funny enough, around the time of Valya Charchki, I was invited by the UN to speak on uh, discrimination at the workplace for the LGBTQI community, done by Godrej uh, uh, and uh, their uh, culture labs. And uh, they've been doing stuff like this and talking about it for a very long time too. Okay. So, um, so yeah, do I have enough sponsors on board to do my drag nights yet? Mm, not, I'll be honest. There have been certain liquor brands who are probably very uh, vocal about it outside of India. But because of Section 377, uh, a similar issue that the insurance companies had when I started speaking to them about it. Oh, we can't do it because of Section 377, it's illegal, it's illegal. We can't insure illegal stuff. Similarly, li some liquor brands did come back and say that, oh, um, we can do this in United Kingdom or we can do this in U US, but not in India. But yes, there was this issue with liquor brands, which I hope somebody is listening. <laughs> uh, and I hope that they, uh, because see, a lot of my, uh, I'm still going to do what I'm doing. I'm still going to do these LGBTQI nights. I don't care. But 
uh, yes, it's not cheap to fly people in from United yeah. States. It's not cheap to fly people in from, you know, different parts of the world, or it's not even cheap to continue my own, uh, even the homegrown artists that I'm doing with drag, uh, you know, so it would be nice if sponsors came on board, it'd be nice if vendors came on board, and it'd be nice if, and I'm not asking them to do anything different. I'm asking them to just copy what they're doing already in other countries. Kesha Suri Mitha, we're completely out of time. Here's <laughs> wishing you all the very best for this big fight that you decided to take on. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you.